Very good evening and welcome to our evening prayer on this Friday, the 16th of June, 2023. Today, the Church celebrates the feast day of Richard, Bishop of Chichester, who died in 1253. And so, a few words about Richard of Chichester. Richard de Witt, or Dwight Witt, as it's now known, was born there in 1197 and worked hard for his yeoman father to restore the family fortunes. Later, he studied at Oxford and Paris and then at Bologna as an ecclesiastical lawyer. When he returned to England in 1235, he was made Chancellor of Oxford University and eventually Chancellor to the Archbishop of Canterbury, Edmund of Abingdon. When Richard became Bishop of Chichester, he was seen as a model diocesan bishop, progressing around his diocese on foot, visiting and caring for his clergy and people, generally being accessible to all who needed his ministry. He insisted that the sacraments be ministered without payment and with a proper dignity. Whilst on a recruitment campaign for the Crusades, he fell ill at Dover and died there on the 3rd of April, 1253. So his mortal remains were translated back to Chichester on this day in the year 1276. And so our evening prayer. O oh God, make speed to save us, O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory for ever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. And so our hymn for this evening is Eternal Light, Shine in My Heart. Eternal light, shine in my heart. Eternal hope, lift up mine eyes. Eternal power, be my support. Eternal wisdom, make me wise. Eternal life, raise me from death. Eternal brightness, make me whole. Eternal spirit, give me breath. Eternal Saviour, come to me. Until by your most costly grace, invited by your holy word, at last I come before your face to know you, my eternal God. This evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us, cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 35. Contend, O Lord, with those that contend with me. Fight against those that fight against me. Take up shield and buckler and rise up to help me. Draw the spear and bar the way against those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let those who seek after my life be shamed and disgraced. Let those who plot my ruin fall back and be put to confusion. Let them be as chaff before the wind which the angel of the Lord thrusts down. Let their way be dark and slippery with the angel of the Lord pursuing them. For they have secretly spread a net for me without a cause. Without any cause they have dug a pit for my soul. Let ruin come upon them unawares. Let them be caught in the net they laid. Let them fall in it to their own destruction. Then will my soul be joyful in the Lord and glory in his salvation. My very bones will say, Lord, who is like you? You deliver the poor from those who are too strong for them, the poor and needy for those who would despoil them. False witnesses rose up against me. They charged me with things I knew not. They rewarded me evil for good to the desolation of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, I put on sackcloth and humbled myself with fasting. When my prayer returned empty to my bosom, it was as though I grieved for a friend or a brother. I behaved as one who mourns for his mother, bowed down and brought very low. 
But when I stumbled, they gathered in delight. They gathered together against me as if they were strangers I did not know. They tore at me without ceasing. When I fell, they mocked me. They gnashed at me with their teeth. Lord, how long will you look on? Rescue my soul from their ravages, my poor life from the young lions. I will give you thanks in the great congregation. I will praise you in the mighty throng. Do not let my treacherous foes rejoice over me, or those who hate me without a cause mock me with their glances. They do not speak of peace, but invent deceitful schemes against those that are quiet in the land. They opened wide their mouth and derided me, saying, We have seen it with our own very eyes. This you have seen, O Lord. Do not keep silent. Do not go far from me, O Lord. Awake, arise to my cause, to my defence, O Lord, my God. Give me justice, O Lord, my God, according to your righteousness. Let them not triumph over me. Let them not say to themselves our heart's desire. Let them not say we have swallowed him up. Let those who rejoice at my trouble be put to shame and confusion. Let those who boast against me be clothed with shame and dishonour. Let those who favour my cause rejoice and be glad. Let, let them say always great is the Lord who delights in his servant's well-being. So shall my tongue be talking of your righteousness and of your praise all the day long. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And the Old Testament reading from the book of Joshua, chapter 24. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons, Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. I gave him Isaac, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I gave Esau the hill country saved to possess, but Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron and I played Egypt with what I did in its midst, and afterwards I brought you out. When I brought your ancestors out of Egypt, you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued your ancestors with chariots and horsemen to the Red Sea. When they cried to the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians, and made the sea come upon them and cover them, and your eyes saw what I did to Egypt. Afterwards you lived in the wilderness for a long time. Then I brought you to the land of the Amorites, who lived on the other side of the Jordan. They fought with you, and I handed them over to you, and you took possession of their land, and I destroyed them before you. Then King Balak, son of Zippor of Mer, set out to fight against Israel. He sent and invited Balaam, son of Beor, to curse you, but I would not listen to Balaam. Therefore he blessed you, so I rescued you out of his hand. When you went over the Jordan and came to Jericho, the citizens of Jericho fought against you, and also the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I handed them over to you. I sent the hornet ahead of you, which drove out before you the two kings of the Amorites. It was not by your sword or by your bow. I gave you a land on which you had not laboured, and towns that you had not built, and you live in them. You eat the fruit of vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. Now therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods, for it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery, and he did these great signs in our midst. He protected us along all the way that we went and among all the people whom we passed, and the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who live in the land. Therefore we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God." Yet Joshua said to the people, you cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve other gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. 
The people said to Joshua, no, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, your witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. And then he said, then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, the Lord God, we will serve and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God, and he took a large stone and set it there under the oak in the sanctuary of the Lord. Joshua said to all the people, see this stone shall be a witness against us, for it has heard all the words of the Lord that he spoke to us. Therefore, it shall be a witness against you if you deal falsely with your God. So Joshua sent the people away to their inheritances. Here ends the first reading. And the song of the justified. Our hope is not in vain because God's love has been poured into our hearts. God reckons as righteous those who believe, who believe in him who raised Jesus from the dead. For Christ was handed over to death for our sins and raised to life for our justification. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Christ we have gained access to the hope in which we stand and rejoice in our hope of the glory of God. We even exult in our sufferings, for suffering produces endurance, and endurance brings hope, and our hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. God proves his love for us in the while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have been justified by his death, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath? Therefore we exult in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have now received our reconciliation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts. From St Luke's Gospel, chapter 12, beginning at verse 41. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, are you telling this parable for us or for everyone? And the Lord said, Who then is the faithful and prudent master, whom his master will put in charge of his slaves to give them their allowance of food at the proper time? Blessed is that slave, whom the master will find at work when he arrives. Truly, I tell you, he will put that one in charge of all his possessions. But if that slave says to himself, My master is delayed in coming, and he begins to beat the other slaves, men and women, and to eat and drink and get drunk, the master of that slave will come on a day that he does not expect and at an hour that he does not know and will cut him in pieces and put him with the unfaithful. That slave who knew what his master wanted but did not prepare himself or do what was wanted will receive a severe blessing. But one who did not know and did what deserved a beating will receive a light beating. For everyone to whom much has been given, much will be required and from one to whom much has been entrusted, even more will be demanded. Here is the second reading. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O God, of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. And the Magnificat. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been little over a little. I will make you ruler over much. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. 
Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been little uh, faithful over a little. I will make you ruler over much. And so we come now to our prayers and intercession. As we pray for the church throughout the world, we pray today for the Diocese of Tirunelavi in South India, for its Bishop Jayaraj. We pray for that diocese and for the people who live in that part of the world. We continue to pray for this diocese of St. Asaph, especially today for Christchurch Bulka Kibai in the Tanat and Burnley mission areas, giving thanks for the strong support the church enjoys at festival services. Amongst our diocese and staff, we pray for Kerry Jones, our Building Conservation and Development Officer, and for Ryan March, the Diocese and Churches Inspector. We pray for those preparing for ordination at this time, especially for those who are being ordained deacon, and for those who are being ordained priest. We remember especially Marcus, praying for his continuing ministry here at St. Giles. We continue to pray for the needs of the world around us, praying for peace and justice and reconciliation. We pray for the people of Ukraine and Eastern Europe, people of Sudan and Yemen and other places where people's lives are afflicted by violence, conflict and natural disaster. We pray for integrity and public life in our own society. Pray for those continuing to face the cost of living crisis. We pray for those who are sick. Louise, Gordon, Joshua, Derek, Jess, Luna, Maldwin, Meyer, and Stan. We remember any others who are known to us and those who have asked us to pray for them. And so we come to our prayers of intercession. Let us by prayer and intercession with thanksgiving make our requests to God. Gracious God, we pray for peace, justice and reconciliation through the world for the honouring of human rights, for the relief of the oppressed. We give thanks for all that is gracious in the lives of men, women and children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the renewal of the Church in faith, love and service. Pray for Gregory, our Bishop, and for the life of this city. We give thanks for the gift of your word, the grace of the sacraments and the fellowship of your people. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for this local community, for all people in their daily life and work. We pray for the young and the elderly, for families, for those who are alone. We give thanks for human skill and creativity and all that reveals your loveliness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are in need, for the sick, sorrowful and bereaved. We pray for all who bring comfort, care and healing. We give thanks for human life and friendship and for all that enriches our daily lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the grace and protection of God. Most merciful Redeemer, who gave your servant Richard a love of learning, a zeal for souls and a devotion to the poor, grant that, encouraged by his example, we may know you more clearly love you more dearly and follow you more nearly day by day, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit are alive and reign one God now and forever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me once again for this evening prayer, and uh, wish you a very good weekend indeed. Thank you.